a quilting tale today. My name is Shaylin and it's been a while since I've filmed a video including one like today's where I'm going to show you my progress on some of my latest projects. I've finished some more and I'm in the middle of some that I had started previously and a brand new one that I'm going to share that I hadn't planned on because if you've seen some of my older videos you know that I'm trying to work my way through those works in progress but this one I just couldn't resist I took a class and I wanted to start working on it while it's fresh in my head so it's gonna be an ongoing one mixed in with the ones that I'm currently trying to finish so I'm a teacher and the end of the school year has been very hectic and so I just haven't had the time to devote to filming like I would like but now I am on summer break and so I'm hoping to be able to make more content over the next couple months and just share what I've been working on and some tips for the projects that I've been doing and yeah just learn and show some progress over the next couple months so with that being said let me show you some quilts that I have finished recently this first one is actually one that I shared in my last progress video because I had finished the top and the backing and I wasn't sure when I was going to get it quilted but it's such a pretty quilt I just ended up taking it with me over spring break um, to a quilt shop that I like to visit where they let you rent time on the long arm and so I ended up doing some edge to edge quilting on the heartfelt quilt along from Fat Quarter Shop. I'm going to have a later video that's more of a show and tell and will show my finished quilts in more depth including what the quilting looks like but I just wanted you to see the binding is on it. I ended up doing a pink gingham binding on this one and it looks really pretty with the red backing. It has pink in the roses there and so yeah it just looks very nice all together um, complements the all the different fabrics in this quilt top so like I said I will share this one and put it up so you can see the whole thing in a later video and so you can see the quilting up close but it's a little hard to set up just right now on my little ironing board stand here so that was one of them the other one I finished was the quilting life mystery block of the month the last progress video I just had one block left to do December's block I got it finished and I had this one quilted too and again I'll show it up close um, in a future video but just wanted you to see a glimpse of it here this one had the different churn dash blocks with different stars and um, half square triangle kind of based blocks, a lot of flying geese in it. Um, I used the poppy cotton Daisy May line on this one and so uh, the backing has the navy print, a bunch of little strawberries and um, blossoms on it and I used a solid just the gold um, fabric for my binding. I've never used just a solid before but I thought with the borders and everything it was kind of busy already which I like these as borders here but I just thought the solid might frame it really nicely and just play on the churn dash borders that each of these blocks have so again I'll show that one up close um, in a future video and this is also a good time to mention if you follow my Instagram or Facebook account I do put up pictures as I finish projects and um, you can see them sooner if you don't want to wait for the next video but it will be there so you can see it up close so you may have seen in a previous video I made a quilt cue to keep track of the order of the quilts I'm gonna work on to try and finish these works in progress and another quilt that I finished and is off to the long armor right now, I'm just waiting to get it back, is my swoon quilt. And so I'm not going to show what the top looked like, but I will show some pictures of the last few blocks that I finished before I sashed them all together. And then again, I'll share that one after I 
do the binding uh, with the two quilts that I just shared. But Swoon is also done, minus the binding. Um, and so my next one on the list was the Brick House quilt. And I've shared some blocks with those. I can't actually finish that one though because I need 16 blocks to finish it. And I'm working on those as I finish each quilt. So each brick house block will represent a different line of fabric or some of them aren't lines of fabric but just the uh, fabric pulls that I did for those quilts. And so um, I need to finish a few more quilts before I can make the 16th block and sash those together. So that one is just kind of pending, um, which brings me now to my ombre puff quilt. This is a free pattern from Lo and Behold Stitchery. I've always wanted to make a puff quilt. They look so cozy and I found some fabrics that I just love the colors together. And so I had shared before how I'd already made the pockets. There's 360 pockets in the quilt size I'm going to make and I've been keeping them in this little decorative box here and so now I'm taking those little um, piles of pockets I labeled them all um, for which column they belong in and I put the top one labeled it with the top so I have all these piles of pockets to sew together now and I'm over halfway done it's you know, looking like these long strips. Um, the back is just spare fabric, so if you see all these bright colors that don't seem to go along, those are just the backs that won't show. They'll be sandwiched between uh, the backing and uh, the pockets later on, but you can kind of get a sense of the different colors that I'm using. There's some peachy corals, some light lavenders, there's a lot of rusty, earthy browns in there. Those are going to be more toward the bottom. These are really long here. So, um, And then there's some dusty pinks and mauves in there. So kind of an earthy palette in here. Um, and yeah, they're coming along nicely. It's fun to revisit this fabric because I haven't worked on this project in a while. Um, I started it, the quilt along started, I believe, in October of 2022. And so I just took a break on it to work on some that were closer to being finished. So hopefully by the time I get my swoon quilt back and I'm able to show all my quilts up close, this will be another one that I'm showing because it doesn't go to the quilts or I'll just be hand tying that one. I've also been working on those vintage truck of the months by Erica Arndt. She has these great patterns for some monthly trucks and they've been hanging in my classroom. I keep them in this basket as I finish them. And so I've made a few more. I believe the last one I shared was January's. And so I'm going to share the other ones now that I've made since then. Um, I use these little slap bracelets. They're just um, kind of silicone feeling snap bracelets. And I write the month on them so they're easy to find. I'll come in close on each of these, but I just want to hold them up too and show you. So this one is February. I used some fabric in the background that has text all over it and the book is Rose and Bloom by Louisa May Alcott and so it just has little excerpts from that story all over the back. A little scrappy pink heart in the truck and some small little roses in the lettering here. Um, I'll show you the quilting up close, but I really love this one. I kind of played off of the paisley design that I had done in January, but I made them heart-shaped and used a light pink thread in this, so it turned out really cute. So you'll see that up front. And then the back is just a soft pink floral and a bright pink gingham binding. That is February. And for March, I went with a brighter orange truck with soft little flowers all over it and a scrappy clover there. Green lettering in March and a green gingham. I kind of have been on a gingham kick for the binding on these I was noticing, but they work really well. And then there is this fig tree green backing. I think this actually is 
from a Christmas line, but it works well with the March with all the green in it too. So there is March. And I tried to quilt in some clovers in here. Some are three leaf, some are four leaf, kind of making heart designs and putting them together to look like clovers. So you'll see that up close in a moment too. By April, I was falling behind. I actually got this hanging in the classroom towards the very end of April. And so I had just made it in the nick of time. But this one has the cute little chick on top of the truck and a patchwork umbrella there. I used kind of a busier background, but it has little bunnies and geese and they're picnicking. I thought that was really cute for the springtime. And I have tulips on the truck, of course. Tulips are big in my part of the country here in the springtime. And then um, I used some of that backing fabric from the Heartfelt Quilt Along quilt um, to make my letters here, just to pull out some of the reds and the tulips. and. The umbrella also had a lot of that flower sugar rose kiss fabric that I used in that quilt top as well. So I finished that quilt in April and this one kind of reminds me of that. It has the same binding as that quilt, the pink gingham I had a little bit left. And then there's more of the little baby ducklings on the back here. So that one, I just did a cross hatch design. I, um, used an erasable marker and used rulers to make uh, straight lines going diagonally across both ways. I believe I did it about two inches apart. So I just made it in time for April and then I did not make May yet. I actually opted to make June because the end of May was approaching and I thought well I could make May and just hang it for a day or I could have the June wall hanging up for a couple weeks before school was out so that's what I ended up doing so I still need to make May but for June I really love this one it's so fun this one has the surfboard and the beach balls and I really like this one because of the fabric it's a little different from what I normally do with florals it has the seagulls with their little beanies and their rain boots they're eating french fries and just hanging around on the fabric and the surfboard I wanted it to be bright and colorful so I have this middle line of smiling jellyfish I'll show you those up close but just really fun bright colors I wanted to do a sandy looking dot print in the background I think this came from the All Hallows Eve line so it was more of a fall line but I thought it looked kind of like sand and then this time, instead of the gingham, I did a striped navy binding. I thought that would work well with the truck. There's some navy in the seagulls attire there. And then a nice, bright, cheerful, summery background. I used the same one in the June lettering. And for this one, I just quilted a meander. Um, nothing real special about June, but I just wanted to do a meander and get it up so I really like how this one turned out so I'm gonna bring the camera in now so you can see each of these up close and the quilting on them as well
a little eye with a French knot on the chick just to make it clearly look like a chick. segments on them and so I just thought that would be a fun play on that and I just varied the other stripes on there. There's those smiley jellyfish. Finally I mentioned a new project that I started and just couldn't help but work on it amongst all these other ones that I'm trying to finish. Um, I had the privilege of attending a two-day class with Rachel Daisy. She is a wonderful instructor from Australia, and she was showing us how to make her extravaganza quilt. And I just, when I saw my local quilt shop was hosting her and saw this quilt, I, even though it's English paper piece and I've never done that before, um, haven't even thought about venturing into it. I just saw the quilt and knew I had to try this. And what better way to learn how to do it than from the instructor herself. And so um, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful two days. I've actually never taken a quilting class before and so it was just joyous being able to sit for several hours and sew with a bunch of women who were passionate about quilting and seeing what everyone was coming up with. You can take the same pattern and it can look so different. There were so many inspirational fabric choices just walking around and seeing what people had selected and several of the ladies there have done English paper piecing before so between them and the instructor I just felt like I got this great crash course in how to do it and I actually love doing it. It's kind of become addicting where you know I can I don't need to be on the sewing machine. I can sit outside and enjoy a nice day out there and just hand sew. And it's fussy cutting pieces that are just fun to work with and they go by so quickly because each block is different. I just, I'm not getting bored with it and I wanted to keep my skills fresh and so I've had a hard time putting it away and working on some of these older projects. But I'll show you one right now and then we'll come in close on all the others. But this is one of the ones that I finished more recently and I just love how it turns out. I've taken this on a weekend trip. I've worked on them. I've done a little um, called to make gathering at a local church where we come in and sew and it's just also portable and easy to work on. When I saw the pattern, it looked complicated and way beyond my skill set and having made several of them now and getting more comfortable with it it just I feel like it looks so impressive but it really isn't that complicated and so that's what's cool about it so if you can ever take her course on the extravaganza quilt I highly recommend it or pick up her pattern because she lays it out very clearly with lots of pictures and it's easy to follow. So let me show you the blocks that I've made so far. This is the first Hextravaganza block that I made. It was the one I started in the class and it's the only one that I've sewn to a background piece. I'm going to just wait and see the other blocks and where I'm going to place them to make sure that the backgrounds are also balanced and so it's just gonna whatever the background is it'll be something soft and that doesn't take too much away from the main focal point which is the extravaganza block and so I decided there were two lines that are going to influence the color palette on this one and I thought they worked well together 
There's one called Posy and another called Sugar and Spice. And so I have some fat quarter bundles of both of those. And so everything else I'm pulling from my stash, which is actually most of what's in this block. I just want to play well with those colors. So this is the first block. You can see I have some strawberries and tulips in there. Gingham to pick up on the green and the roses. And then yellow might seem like an odd choice for the background here, but I want to tie in yellow from other fabrics that I know I've pulled for this. This one was my second one. It's one of my favorites so far. It's from the Sugar and Spice line. And there were just so many cute little animals on there with a Valentine theme and sweets. Um, it was a little busy around the sides. I thought it was kind of distracting. And so Rachel Daisy suggested I do a triple frame on this one and just really zoom in on that focus fabric there. And so I have lots of pinks and reds. This one comes from the same line, the Sugar and Spice. I've been working on making sure all my stripes line up. Um, but then others were just from my stash, like these little cherries and the red gingham. Just thought, again, could pull in from the red in the Sugar and Spice. There's a bit of yellow in the cone. And so again, just trying to bring in some of those colors if they're not directly in the fabric, I know they'll be in others. So this was one of the main lines. This third one here didn't have any of the main lines, but again, I'm just trying to pull the colors. So the pinks, um, some of the blues in there, this one has a more minty green to it, but I also have that in some other fabrics to make them complement each other. And here's some of that yellow. So when I pick a background for this, it won't be a yellow background, but I wanted to tie it in. I think this one is from Sugar Creek, a Cory Yoder fabric. So again, just lots of stash usage in this quilt. This one comes from Posy. That's the center fabric here. And this is the Flower Sugar Rose Kiss that I had left over from that heartfelt quilt along quilt I was showing earlier and then this is an older fabric I can't remember what the line was but again just pulling out that bright green in there have the bright pinks so a lot of the fabric colors that I like um, seem to be plentiful in the stash to use in this quilt so I'm liking how I have so many options and won't have to reuse a lot of the same fabric this is where I start to take some liberties to expand out of just the floral and paisley that I'm usually drawn to. This is that Tula Pink Everglow line and I just saw it and loved the little hippo with his bum underwater and the butterfly on his nose. And I thought, oh, it doesn't quite go with the theme of the others. I have the little animals and the sugar and spice, but I thought this is a sweet hippo too and the colors work well with the colors that I'm using and again I took the other hippos I didn't want hippo body parts just showing up in the main fabric here so I did a triple frame on this one as well and so I've got the strawberries and cherry fabric this was a vintage fabric that I got um a few months ago from a vendor and just thought it all looks really nice together but I just feel like this quilt is going to be eclectically beautiful I'm hoping the colors just all work well so even if the themes are a little different Rachel Daisy was saying just each block should give the viewer something to look at and and just want to go in close and see what you put in there and I feel like that's what this is doing is just making you want to examine each one because there are little surprises in each. And this is the most recent finish as I mentioned before. This one, the focus fabric here is called Local Honey. And again, I wasn't expecting to use the mint green at first because that's not in the main lines, but I'd already used one before and so now it's just all tying in. I have some of the pinks 
showing up in here that tie in and then this stripe is from one of my main lines that I'm using. I actually fussy cut some of the local honey fabric that was this focus fabric to um, make little hexes here that go on the corners of the block and so I have that Sugar Creek fabric in blue because I do have that light blue and other fabrics like the one with the little puppy and the ice cream cone that I showed earlier. So the more of these I make when I spread them all out, they start to look more and more nice together and I just get so excited about them. I, it's hard, like I said, to stop working on this one because I just love seeing it all come together. This one I had to work really hard to try and line up the stripes. I, I couldn't always hit them right on, but like in this one, it's not quite a match, but a lot of them I was able to. And so from a distance, um, you know, it all just looks nice together. And so I'm just really, I've really taken to this English paper piecing. I didn't think I would, like I said, but it's just been a lot of fun. One more thing I wanted to share was this craft to go case I made um, using another Erica Arndt pattern. And I made this specifically to carry all the English paper piecing supplies in it. So I had this little cheater fabric that already looks like it was sewn together and I just did some top stitching around the squares. I used a decorative zipper here that had little scissors on it. And when you open it up, there's a little pop of yellow and roses, um, or tulips in there too. And I'm just keeping the extra pieces I have, some extra hexagons and things I'll use for accents later in my extravaganza quilt. So that's the front. So I used a bright pink gingham handle, and then the back has this really pretty kind of vintage um, advertisements all over with the pinks and reds. So I really like that. Let me show you the inside. I'm going to try and do this one-handed. It's trimmed with the same inside lining fabric here. This looks like the zipper is on this side. And so here's what's on the inside. So I have this vinyl here that I got from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I have these little lace doilies, fabric inside, lots of threads that match my um, fabric colors. I've got my little glue pen refills and my glue pen here. A little um, tape measure. So that goes in there and then at the bottom I just tuck my fabric cutting scissors, so travel size best press, my little hexagons that are reusable. And then this I got from taking the extravaganza class. It's really neat little um, thread spool holder. There's a magnet here for needles and then the glue pen just pops in like so and so that's really handy to have when I'm actually um, making my blocks. So I just kind of tuck those all in here and I love the color. And then on this side are some smaller pockets. I've got my threads, more threads in here. Um, this is a little magnetic strip in here and a little flap that has my needles and pins and then another pocket to put embroidery scissors. I tuck a pencil in there too. Um, I put a little bit of um, interfacing. I wadded it up at the bottom because these scissors are pretty sharp so I was trying to protect them from poking through there. So I trimmed with these tiny little strawberries. You can see strawberries throughout um, including on the trim of the fabric. They're on the little doilies there. And so yeah, this is the perfect size case to carry all my supplies and make it portable. I can take it with me and work on those 
blocks wherever I go. Here's that vinyl that I got for the inside instead of just clear. So it's Missouri Star Fancy Vinyl 15 inch by 35 inch roll. And you can see because it's rolled so tightly it kind of comes out looking like this. And so I had tried just placing some heavy books on it to flatten it and that didn't work. So I just stuck a piece of fabric on top. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do this, but it worked for me. Put a piece of fabric on top and took a low iron setting and just pressed it for a few seconds and it flattened out. As you can see, it's not all <laughs> curled up and it didn't damage any of the print. So yeah, it worked really well. One word of warning, I used a pretty bulky zipper. Um, I just happened to have this one. It was white. It I thought it would look good with this fabric, but it was so thick. I broke two needles trying to sew this in. It made it a little challenging. So I would recommend, if you're going to do this pattern, um, a zipper with finer teeth that needles can go through. Like this one, there was no problem with it. But if you have these big plastic teeth here, I don't know, that can be a little difficult to sew over, at least with my machine. So that's it for now. Even though it's been a while since I've put out a video, I still quilt in when I can find the time. And like I said, I hope to do a lot more this summer. And so if you liked this video and want to give it a thumbs up, it's appreciated. And subscribing to the channel also helps a lot. So thank you again for watching. And remember, you can follow my progress on Instagram or Facebook. And I'll be making more of these as I complete more blocks and quilts. It's always fun to share them with you. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing them. See you next time.